Hej, Merete Badger. I'm from the Wind Energy Department at the DTU. My field of research is in wind power meteorology, and I'm going to talk about an online training course we've developed in this field. We call it WASP e-learning. WASP stands for the Wind Atlas Analysis and Application Program, and it's a software package that the DTU Wind Energy has developed. We have many years of experience with giving training courses in this software and how to use it. And uh, we've now turned the course into an online course. The course development is part of a larger context, an EU-funded project called Virtual Campus Hub. In the Virtual Campus Hub project, four technical universities in Europe work together to try and break down some of the barriers that exist for uh, collaborating online uh, between universities. Each university in the project has developed an application for online learning or collaboration. And the access point for all these applications is what we call the Virtual Campus Hub portal. Uh, from this portal, users can uh, sign in with their local username and ID, the one from their uh, local university, and they can get access to applications from other universities. I'll now dive into our course and tell you a little bit more about how we developed it. When we started in 2011, most online teaching was uh, what we call learning as acquisition. It means one-way learning. Video streaming of lectures is a very good example of that. We decided early on to uh, take another approach, which we call learning as participation. It means that the learner is much more involved in their own learning and, learning and knowledge construction. And uh, there are different ways to be involved. For example, uh, participants can uh, discuss online with other participants, they can participate in uh, group work, or they can take quick self-tests online. The WASP course is built on a five-stage scaffolding model by Jilly Salmon, and it's shown here. The idea is that participants start at the lower level of the model, and as the course progresses, they move up this learning scaffold. And uh, as they move up, the amount of interactivity increases and students also become more uh, independent and more responsible for their own learning. So at the early stages of the course, we make sure that uh, all the participants have uh, found their way to the system and can uh, navigate around the learning material. We quickly move on to some simple socializing exercises where we encourage the participants to share a little bit of information about themselves. For example, we ask them about their background, we ask them how they got interested in wind energy, and perhaps a little bit about the wind climate in their area. We then move on to the real course content in stage three and four, where the participants work with the hands-on exercises in WASP, they listen to presentations about the theory, and they discuss online. And at stage five, when the students have uh, reached a state where they uh, are independent learners, they are presented with a case study where they have to work independently uh, on a complete WASP analysis and application. The role of the teacher in this type of course is to moderate and help and support the participants in their learning. And, um, We've chosen a learning platform called It's Learning to hold this course. And uh, it's a commercial cloud service that has a range of functionalities that support a structured uh, design of an online course and also interactivity. To the left here, you see a hierarchy of folders. That's where the course content is found. And it's very easy for participants to navigate in the course material when it's presented in this structured way. You also see the course dashboard which is a, a platform where the teacher, or the e-moderator as we call them, can post important messages about the course. Each course module is divided into e-lessons that deal with a specific course uh, topic, and every e-lesson is structured in a fixed way. An e-lesson starts with an introduction, where we try to spark the learner's interest uh, uh, in this topic. We then have a list of learning objectives and some tasks that the participants have to complete. Examples of tasks could be to listen to a recorded PowerPoint presentation or to complete a WASP exercise. It can also be to reflect over a question and discuss it with a, a group in a discussion room. The teacher's role 
as an e-moderator is first and foremost to moderate the group discussions. And we divide the participants into groups of 8 to 10 people because we've learned that this is the ideal group size to achieve a fruitful and uh, active discussion. The teachers will al also write an end summary after each module. And uh, another important role of the e-moderator is to support the participants' progress. This means that when we see a participant starts getting a bit behind in the course, we take contact via direct email and encourage the participant to continue. And in this way, we hope to motivate all participants to complete the course and uh, receive a diploma at the end. The course has nine uh, course modules in total, and we open a new course module every week. So uh, the total duration of the course is nine weeks. And uh, there's never any synchronized communication between the teachers or the course participants. All the uh, dialogue happens in an asynchronous way. And this gives a high degree of flexibility for both the the participants and the teachers. As part of the project Virtual Campus Hub, we've had the opportunity to test the course with participants from the wind energy industry and from the other project partners. Um, the participants have uh, given us their feedback through online surveys and uh, here's some feedback from uh, the last test we did. All of the participants found that uh, the online learning process was fruitful for them and they would recommend the course to others. I've put a quote here from one participant who says that all the e-moderators and participants were very active and it was therefore easy to learn. So how do we share the knowledge we've gained from Virtual Campus Hub and from designing our first e-learning course? We've written a series of reports as part of the Virtual Campus Hub project and they can all be found at the project website. We've also presented the project at international you know, conferences dealing with energy and education and e-infrastructure. We've participated in a number of uh, internal seminars about education at DTU. We have a journal paper in preparation about the project. If you're interested in developing an online course, it's possible to get a guest account to its learning so you can visit our uh, environment and see how we've done it for your inspiration. There's already been uh, quite a lot of interest in, uh, in uh, the WASP course and what we've achieved with that. So we have two new uh, courses in preparation at DTU Wind Energy. And all the teachers who are developing different courses have access to each other's course material so they can use each other for inspiration. We've also put the recorded presentations online outside of the learning environment. This means that all the teachers have easy access to them and they can share them as much as they want for example, with participants in their physical courses, so they can be used for blended learning, for example. I hope this presentation has inspired you to start your own online teaching, and you're always welcome to contact me if you have any further questions about our experiences. <laughs>